Hi there and welcome to Mini Fights. I'm Brian and today I'm going to take you on an adventure of painting my Karomo Sky Tear Miniatures. Karomo? Karomo. We're going to start off by priming them black, zenithing them white, which is a technique I've used on a bunch of my other videos as well. And you can probably see it with a little more detail elsewhere. But the idea is that you prime them black, zenithal white over the top, and you get sort of a two-tone value shift. Now, I, I'm going to use an airbrush here. You don't have to use an airbrush for this technique at all. I'm actually just going to spray them down with Vallejo Orange Rust. And you can just hand paint the orange rust on there. It's going to allow some of the underpainting to show through. So there'll be darker areas and lighter areas. The lighter areas will look basically like the orange rust out of the bottle. Darker areas will be kind of more of a brownish tone. Now, after this step, we're going to do our zenithal, zenithal, zenithal again. Again, I'm going to use an airbrush, but again, you don't have to. You can do this with a rattle can. Now, I'm selectively placing some white where I want the next color to be, which can be yellow, to kind of show up lighter, right? So we're kind of rebuilding our, our light on the model. You could do this by just spraying from above again with a white rattle can. Uh, the only thing I would say that might be a little tricky is that little spot I did in the middle of her scythe blade, but, you know, you can make it work for sure. Uh, you can do a little bit of brushing as well. You can do the same thing to the minions. Gonna kind of center it on the little symbol that's on their head. I believe that's the symbol for Koromo. Also gonna hit their bases a little bit, which will kind of create a transition later on the uh, kind of lava areas that are on the base. Now we're gonna use medium yellow. Medium yellow is very, very transparent. So this is essentially just a tint or a glaze. And we're just gonna hose the whole model down with it. And the reason we're gonna do that is the areas that are orange will still stay orange, although they will shift slightly towards yellow, and then the areas you spray white will be very, very vibrant yellow. This is basically the same technique I use on my Infinity Yujing. Uh, Yuching, I should say, excuse me. Uh, and a few of my other models as well. This is kind of my default for yellow, uh, kind of a vibrant orange yellow. And from this point on, we're just working with brushes. So not too much airbrush at all. Really not necessary like we talked about earlier. I'm working in the next darkest color in our sort of flame motif. And this is gonna be Vallejo Light Rust. Not to be confused with Orange Rust, which is the orange color we used earlier. And as you can probably tell from the video, I've thinned this paint down to a glaze consistency, just with a little bit of water. Because it is a transparent pigment, like the other pigments we're working with, and a, a lot of yellows and oranges are, we can apply it, brush it around. You can see that I'm using some water on the brush to wet blend, move it around a little bit. It's very easy to do. You just kind of put it where you kind of want it, block it in, move it around with the brush, remove it with a dry brush, like, you know, just take your brush and clean the paint off and go back and, and just clean up. Blend it out with a little water, it's great. So you can see I'm just moving it around and it works really well for that. Warm tones are really easy to do this with. It's one of the reasons why I kind of decided with this scheme on these models. Uh, they're a flame motif anyway, but I wanted to use this kind of yellow-orange, uh, smoky flame fire look. Now this step is a little interesting. We're using VMA, uh, which stands for Vallejo Model Air, by the way. There's also Vallejo Model Color, which is the same paint, just not for airbrushing. Although you can use VMA with a brush like I'm doing here now. We're using VMA Olive Drab, which is a greenish brown, a neutral green brown. That little bit of green is gonna offset some of the warmth of this color. 
And the idea here is that we're pushing it into kind of the smoke color of a flame motif. We're also using it to just build definition between areas like any uh, kind of dark shade wood. One thing that I didn't immediately take account uh, when I started painting these and kind of changed midway is that the ideal way to paint fire is to actually have the source be the lightest and work it to the darkest, which implies smoke. Uh, so the flames coming off of the little minions halberds, I guess they are, stone halberds, volcano stone halberds, those flames are going to end with the darkest color. So they're going to go from the basic yellow up to this dark tone. The next step is to use one of the most useful colors that should be in everyone's library if you use Vallejo paint. It's Vallejo model color ice yellow, uh, which is just a little bit of a warm white, uh, very strongly opaque. We're going to build this up where our final light is supposed to be, edge highlight the scythe, and add some light to the various parts of her dress and the lightest points of the flame on the other models. So you can see, I'm putting the light where I think it would make sense on Yami. And that's a generic statement I apologize for, but there is kind of an eye to this. And there is a methodology that you will learn as you get more experience painting things like flame. And I'm sort of treating her whole dress as just construction of flame. So I'm putting the lights where I think it makes sense, where it looks cool. Doesn't necessarily have to make perfect three-dimensional light visual sense, that's fine. I'm just getting quite a bit of this color applied. All right, once again, we're going back to the well of our glazing methodology. All of this ice yellow that we put in, it's too chalky and it's too white and it doesn't look right. But that's okay, we knew that. We're going to glaze it with that Vallejo medium yellow that we used before. You can see, for example, here on the scythe, it immediately tones down the white while still leaving the light there. And I'm going to just use the side of the brush to apply it to all of these highlights that we put in. And it immediately changes it back to yellow and less of like a, a floating white highlight, which is not the look we're going for. So compared to everything else we've been doing, this is a really easy step. We're just going to take Vallejo Model Air Dark Gray Blue and apply it to the stone areas. I, I believe they're all stone areas, although the armor is maybe metal on these minions. I'm painting them in kind of an abstract fashion where they're essentially just rock men coming out of the earth that have random parts of their body on fire. So we're going to treat the armor and the blade as the same material and paint it as gray. Now I've told myself I'm going, I'm committed to a much smaller overall palette of colors with this particular set of models than I typically do. And the reason for that is I want to have a, a strong, decisive language amongst this faction's models that all really look similar. So I don't mix them up with my opponent's models. I don't mix them up with my other faction models on the table. I want them to be really unique and different and not, uh, have a lot of crossover with the palettes I'm going to choose for my remaining three factions. 
That being said, I applied the dark gray to most of Sakoshi, almost all of his clothing. We're gonna keep him fairly monochrome. And this is a pretty flexible color. It's also going to be the base for our non-metallic metal chain that wraps around Yami's arm and her scythe. This is going to be another easy step, and it's still using our limited palette. We're going to go back to our olive drab, which is the darkest color we use in our flame, and we're going to use that as the base for the wood shafts of our weapons. Here's where we get into some of the fun stuff. We're actually gonna do a little bit of color mixing. We're going to lighten up this gray that we used on Sakoshi and the various minion models and a little bit on Yami and edge highlight it. And this is our first layer, so it's kind of blocky. I would say you're applying it to maybe 20 to 30 or so percent of the surface. So this is sort of the big layer. And you can see the armor there is layered on the minions. So I just kind of dragged the brush over. It's not really a dry brush but it's not really directional, perfect pinpoint highlighting either. You just kind of use the tool, you use the side of the brush to your advantage. Now Sakoshi's model actually has quite a few small folds on it. So I decided to just really lightly dry brush for my first layer. So I took a flat brush, gave it a little dry brush of this color we'd mixed, which is, like I said, about 25-75 mixture of white and dark gray blue. And applied that to the model quickly with a dry brush. We're now gonna work on the next layer. And you can see I'm mixing in more white. We're getting to maybe about a 50-50 mix now. It's much lighter, it's getting much closer to white. You can really see this technique and how effective it is with just really three total layers on a color as I apply this edge highlight to these weapons and the little haft or the, the cross piece I guess it would be and just drag it down the armor on the edges a little bit. This is the, the step that if you're not really super familiar with miniature painting, when you see some models from a few feet away this is what's going to let you see the details. You see the edges by adding this extra light. So obviously miniature painting is an exaggeration of real light, right? Otherwise you could just paint this model yellow and gray and walk away and natural light would, would make everything work, right? But we, we exaggerate for effect and because it's a smaller thing. So to make our miniatures pop at distance as well as up close, we got to build up highlighting this way. And it can look stark up close, but that's okay. It's very effective on the tabletop, and that's ultimately what we're really aiming for here with these miniatures. At this stage, I'm getting pretty close to finishing the edge highlights, and you can see I'm actually mostly using the side of the brush, but sometimes the point, and just kind of getting a, that last lighter layer 
inside the middle layer that we applied with the dry brush. And it immediately makes the folds and stuff on his, uh, you know, a ninja suit he's wearing, his, his gi, I think they're called, it makes him stand out more. Uh, so, I we have that mix made, and I don't want to add more colors to our palette. We're trying to keep the palette size small. So we're just going to take that color, and we're going to use it to block out all these areas, these trim areas on his, his uniform. Uh, we're also going to use it to block out the flesh, because all this stuff kind of has a bunch of yellow and black and random overspray and junk on it. We're going to block this out and make sure that the flesh has a nice even layer to apply to, and the trim which is going to be red on his outfit, that needs a very light gray or white undercoat to apply cleanly. Red will not cover all that other stuff, otherwise it'll look real muddy in it as it shows through. blocked in our flesh and we've blocked in the red areas on Sakoshi's uniform. I decide to go and up do the flesh on the two models that have it, which are the two heroes. The minions do not have flesh and it's a mix of those two colors. It is uh, Vallejo model color basic skin tone and olive drab. So again using olive drab uh, by adding one color to our palette here. And this mix is I would say a, a desaturated skin tone. A little on the pallid side, a little on the sort of unhealthy side. I wasn't 100% sure about it at first, but as I built it up, I really kind of... I felt like it really fit. It fits the kind of volcanic, deathly flame samurai motif that this faction has a lot. And some of the other models especially are like basically dead dudes. <laughs> so, or guys that are possessed by demons, things like that. So I think it's kind of this cool ashy not very lively flesh tone uh, that we sort of ran onto him by accident, but I'm ultimately going to be happy with it. And you'll see it as it develops here. We're just base coating with the first color, which is about a half and a half mix of those two colors that we, we spoke about earlier. And this is the step that if you know a little bit about miniature painting, maybe you've uh, you know read a miniature painting subreddit or something, you'll see some people use washes for this step. And I definitely could have used a, some sort of flesh wash or a brownish wash or reddish wash. I decided though to use our olive drab, thinned it down very thin, and applied it to where I felt the light would, you know, where the shade would be on the faces. This is a little bit more of an advanced technique. So you could, for example, instead, thin this paint out and use it as a wash and just apply it over the flesh uniformly, which is kind of what I did in areas, but ultimately I aimed it. It was kind of a targeted wash um, or a shade or, or a glaze shade. You know, there's a lot of terms for that, but basically applying a thinned out paint to the recesses. And you can see I'm balancing it out. If I make, if I make a mistake, I use that original flesh tone color, clean it up. Now we're gonna go right into just pure Vallejo basic skin tone, which is still a fairly pallid color. This is gonna be our first step of light here on the flesh. That step is gonna wrap the flesh up. I'm not painting eyeballs, pupils, lipstick, eyeshadow, um, any of the other like kind of advanced techniques that people use on faces. These are tabletop models, and I'm trying to keep my total time spent on these models to about three hours, which I think I got pretty close to. 
Now we're going to work in this red, which is very vibrant. This is Vallejo Model Air Ferrari Red. There is, I assume, also a model color version. If you're not an airbrush guy uh, or gal, you can go ahead and just buy the regular model color version, which will be a little thicker out of the pot. And once again, our palette is limited, so we're going back to colors we've already used. We are mixing the dark gray blue and the olive drab into the red. That neutralizes it because you're mixing sort of a cool tone and a warm tone into it, and it darkens it. And we're gonna apply this as a shade. And again, as all the shades have been so far, it's very thinly applied, it's very glazy. You can see it on my palette, it's really watery. You let, let it flow a little bit, control it with a wet brush. You can move it around, you can remove it. It's very nice to shade this way. And second step is just a quick little highlight and we mixed a little bit of our basic flesh tone into the red. We don't wanna to go too far with this. The more you highlight the red, the closer it gets to pink or orange or yellow. So we just give it that one little dab of highlight, call it a day. So Yami and Sakoshi do have, uh, I'm gonna, they both have, obviously have hair and we're gonna paint them the same way. We're gonna start with black mixed with just a tiny bit of our gray just to take it down to like one notch of value, maybe make it a nine instead of a 10 on the value scale. I'm gonna block in both of their hair, his treasure chest and his bag. The bag is where he stores his sweet lava ninja stars. All right, I've said it a million times, but limited palette. <laughs> so the limited palette in this case, we took our ice yellow, which we've already used before, so we're not adding any colors, mixed it in with our black mixture, and we're laying in, we're blocking in the first big light chunk of the hair. And the reason I call it a chunk is you can see, I'm not really following each strand of sculpted hair with this. I'm instead blocking the color in where light would hit hair, just typically kind of next to the part, like where it raises and then comes down, and then a few other spots. And the next step, I'm just gonna mix more ice yellow into that mix, about 75, 25 ice yellow to black. And now I'm gonna put in some streaks, and this is just at the very high points of the hair. Hair is, is very reflective in those areas, so you can kind of give it a pretty sharp jump, as I've done. I've gone from black to, I've probably gone from from nine on the value scale to like maybe two or three here. So we've really made a big value jump. It's very eye-catching, um, but it looks like hair.
So I have a confession to make. I don't really plan <laughs> paint schemes very well. And I hadn't really thought through what I was going to do with this treasure chest until towards the end. So I could have painted these areas earlier. And if you're following along yourself and you're trying to emulate this scheme exactly, you could have done this earlier in, in the process as well. We paint the treasure chest, the olive drab, or I should say, sorry, black. Then the olive drab where the wood will be. And then we give the banding on it, the non-metallic metal treatment, which is exactly what we're doing here to Yami's staff. So those little rings along the staff and the links of her chains we're giving a non-metallic metal paint scheme. Non-metallic metal just means you're emulating metallic look without using actual metallic paint that has like metal flakes in it. So you're just basically working with the grayscale to imply a, a very reflective surface and, and obviously that's metal, right? Now we're getting pretty close here. So this step uh, on a lot of miniatures is, is almost you're, you're done. But because of the unique nature of these bases, they're a lava surface, or I should say a stone surface, you know, volcanic rock that they're standing on, and then there's like lava flows between it. You kind of have to be careful here. You can apply this with the side of the brush and leave the lava kind of trails through it. Try to, you know, leave this stuff underneath. I realized with Sakoshi kind of midway through painting him that most of what he's standing on is just kind of solid stone and then there's coins laying on top of it that have come out of the chest. So I did all this kind of highlighting work where I built up the nice orange all the way out to yellow at the edge of the base and then ultimately kind of just painted over all of that. And that goes along with what I was saying earlier, I'm not the best planner when it comes to painting. Uh, I find that you just got to kind of go sometimes. So I just went, rolled with the, the base scheme I had in my head and you know sometimes you got to undo a step, no big deal. So now that we've put that first layer of black on the bases, volcanic rock, edges, all that junk, I'm going to mix up a highlight here with colors that are already on our palette. And this highlight is just going to be applied to the staff handles on the various models that have them. Uh, so Yami and the minions, just putting in a, one little quick highlight. And I do go back a little bit and blend it in with a thinned... I think it, uh, what is the color? Olive drab, I, I thin out olive drab and kind of blend it in here a little bit. So there's a couple highlights, a little bit of blending down using our thin paint. You know, I hope if, if there's anything you take from this, no matter how advanced of a painter you are, you can really emulate a lot of layering, a, a process that looks like you spent tons and tons of time building 20 layers or whatever by using thin paints and, and transitioning your layers that way by kind of Applying them over layer A and layer B and create, you know, the layer between them visually. So talking about those coins, just base coating them here, flicking a little white on them. Applying our rust orange to the coins, we're also applying it, you know, ultimately <laughs> I did all this work on the bases to kind of do the blends early and then sort of blew it all out or, or missed really where it needed to be. So we got to go back and do a lot of it by hand. So you can see here, I'm just reinforcing what's already there with that orange, blending the feet and the minions into the lava a little bit more, just putting it where it makes sense. Our initial zenithal stuff we did is still there, but some of it's just been blown out or it's not quite in the right spot. So you just got to fix this stuff by hand. I 
So for the third or fourth time, we're going right back to the well. We put the white dots on the coins to, to create light. And now we're glazing them with medium yellow. And that is going to take the white away and give us a nice point of light on it that is a yellow point of light. And the last step to get these, you know, I would say decent tabletop quality miniatures finished and is really gonna tie the room together is to address this volcanic rock on their bases. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna highlight the chunky stone that's on Sakoshi's base here, the various dried lava stone that's on the minions and also here on Yami's base. And you can see that there's breaks in the stone, there's lines in it, so we're just highlighting them as pieces quickly blocking them in with this mixture of gray, colors we've already used in our palette. And we're gonna do a second layer, just mix a little more white into the mix. And we are also gonna do a third layer, which is gonna be sort of a point highlight. So there's gonna be four total layers of the volcanic rock, black, and then three gray mixes, building up closer and closer to white. It's really starting to come together. I really like that part of Sakoshi's base there, with the little lava channels that transition from orange to yellow. I like the way the light reflects off the treasure chest. Uh, the coins, it's looking pretty good. Now, now we're on the final step. <laughs> so we're gonna take our black and we're gonna put the final coat on. This, we're gonna make sure this is nice and opaque, clean up any messes that we had from earlier painting the black edges. This is the last step of all my miniatures is paint, paint the edge of the base black. It's very exciting to get it done here. And here we are, tabletop quality Kuromo. We got Yami and Sakoshi flinging lava weapons. And we got our little pals, our little minions. I would give these probably a difficulty level of something like maybe 5 out of 10. Based on some of my other miniatures, uh, you can see kind of what I feel like with the, the comparison of other difficulty levels of other things I've painted on the channel. These are definitely a, a good tabletop quality that will impress your friends and look really awesome when you take it out to play this game, which is ultimately kind of a hybrid of miniature and board game, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can certainly push these techniques further, build more layers, build more, uh, you know, do more interesting things, put more freehand in. Um, you know, there's some there's some opportunity there with these miniatures to go further, but I think this is a good spot for what they are, and I think they're very striking, and they're going to have their own kind of Brian's Coromo language that my friends' models won't necessarily have, and they're going to be very distinct on the tabletop. Thanks so much for coming on this journey with me. If you like this, you like Sky Tear, you like painting content, you want to learn some more techniques, or you just like watching me paint, please subscribe. We're going to have some more stuff for Sky Tear, uh, some battle reports, more painting, obviously, uh, some other discussion of the cards, things like that. So stay tuned. It's coming. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.